I'm Phil Gale. Welcome to the program. We'll start in the United States, where Wednesday night saw Donald Trump's rivals clash at the second Republican debate to determine the party's next presidential candidate, though Mr Trump opted not to attend. The seven candidates taking part uh, in the debate, which was hosted by Fox Business Network, included the former South Carolina governor, Nikki Haley, a current Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, and Mr Trump's former vice president, Mike Pence. Mr. Trump is still the clear front runner in the polls uh, to become the Republican presidential candidate. A former New Jersey governor, uh, Chris Christie, who has built his campaign around criticizing uh, the former president, accused him of hiding from voters. And I want to look at that camera right now and tell you, Donald, I know you're watching. You can't help yourself. I know you're watching, okay? And you're not here tonight. Not because of polls and not because of your indictments. You're not here tonight because you're afraid of being on the stage and defending your record. You're ducking these things. And let me tell you what's going to happen. You keep doing that, no one up here is going to call you Donald Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. All right. I want to ask uh, let's get more from uh, William uh, Glucroft, who's been following the debate. Uh, welcome, uh, William. Uh, we have the uh, front runner uh, once again, by a long margin, uh, choosing not to appear. That's right, and probably not the worst tactic for him. I mean, why should he? He's so far ahead of these candidates, many of whom are polling in single digits. Why should he be on the stage when he is the show himself, right? Uh, Donald Trump is becoming like the shark in Jaws, where he gets scarier the less you see him, and he only kind of shows up at the end to a great gasp. Um, so Donald Trump, really, you can see it from his perspective, why would he? Uh, in fact, one of his senior advisors called this debate boring and inconsequential. And I think a lot of commentators, a lot of pollsters and voters themselves might agree with that assessment. So given that, that, that assessment, uh, were there any highlights? Well, of course, you had Nikki Haley calling Vivek uh, Suswami the uh, dumb, basically, or feeling like she was getting dumber uh, every time he talked to uh, the businessman who she also attacked for his dealings, his business dealings in China, which he's walked back now, which Mike Pence, uh, the former vice president, also jumped on him for saying that must be because you were running for president. So how convenient of you to suddenly distance yourself from your, your Chinese business dealings. There was a lot of sniping back and forth. There was a lot of argumentation. There was a lot of crosstalk. Um, clearly, these candidates were all trying to land some kind of punch to make a headline, uh, you know, go trend in social media, make some kind of joke, anything that will kind of put them above the rest. But at the end of the day, none of them seem to really land any anything uh, that might uh, change their position in the polls and, and, and nip at Donald Trump's heels. And as we just heard, Chris Christie, the former New Jersey governor, who is not very liked among in, within the Republican Party, was really the only person to directly address Donald Trump at all. And so what are the polls saying about who performed best? Well, the the debate only wrapped up recently, the, so any kind of hard polls are going to be difficult to come by. It's unlikely that a single debate will really change much in the polls, even in an effective one. Uh, you have to, it's sort of a chicken and egg situation where, for example, if you're a DeSantis fan, you're probably going to hear things from DeSantis that you like. Uh, it's not that DeSantis himself is going to say anything convincing to bring someone over to his side. And the same goes for other candidates. So basically, people, viewers and, and voters are bringing their biases into watching this debate for those who watched it all and those who watched through the 90 minutes and didn't shut off after, let's say, 10 or 15 minutes, as past ratings often show. Um, so it's a bit hard to say if this debate actually will change or move the needle at all. Um, we've heard some, you know, immediate after debate uh, reactions. And you can hear it in voters, the tone of voters' voices in how uh, U.S. media networks are interviewing people, uh, that they're bringing their likes and dislikes for candidates in with them into the debate. And that's very much coloring the way that people see these candidates. All right. So uh, a word then on what Mr. Trump was doing while he wasn't debating. Where was he? Well, he's probably uh, plotting. I mean, I'm not there, obviously, but probably wondering well, what his next move is in, in the legal case that he's facing. Um, he's also, of course, um, doing his own campaign stops. He's been connected with the current auto workers strike that's going on right now in the U.S., uh, trying to make his own way. You know, Donald Trump doesn't have to do much to get anybody to talk about him, to get us to talk about him. But he, of course, faces all these legal problems between him uh, and any, any potential candidacy. Whether or not that matters or not, of course, is something that's going to unfold in the months ahead. All right, thanks for that, William. Uh, William Grucroft.